Uh, what makes Dylan Dessou kind of a matchup problem? <laughs> uh, good question. He's um, well, he's skilled, right? He's skilled. He's got great size. Um, he can score facing the basket. He can score with his back to the basket. Um, you're playing with a bigger guy. He's got quickness um, that he can get by and, and a high skill level. You're playing with a smaller guy. He can take him inside and score without a dribble. Um, really good at catching, facing, shooting right away or, you know, turning and shooting his floater. Um, and then, you know, he rebounds at a high rate. And defensively, uh, he does a great job. You know, with blocking shots, challenging shots, and so he's just it's all around a really good player. I know it didn't unfold this way through the first chunk of minutes uh, the other day, but you thought this would be a good shooting team uh, for you guys this year. Are you starting to turn into the shooting team you thought you'd be? Um, yeah, we're getting there. We keep improving, and we're learning to take the right shots, and so that's that that's helpful. Is there anything to the fact that that? Going into the Sprint, or not Sprint Center, the Team Mobile Team Mobile Center, uh, you guys have played there. You've won there already this year. Is there it help with mentality at all? Man, I, I would like to believe so, but last year we played there, won there, and then went in and ran into uh, TCU, which was a bad matchup for us, you know, with Mike Miles, and uh, we didn't win. So, I mean, it's uh, you know, the hardest game to win is the first one in any tournament, and we just have to just go and try to be the best version of ourselves. And then I have to believe, like, since Cincinnati, you guys have kind of been in that survive and advance type mentality, or I guess maybe since key. And is that become even more pronounced whenever you're in kind of a, a neutral type venue, tournament venue, like Big 12 tournament? Um, you know, I've been watching, and the guys obviously have been watching all these conference tournaments. You know, and you see uh, teams, um, who was it, East, East Tennessee State was down 20 and came back and sent it to overtime and ended up winning. And you see guys, the guys from Chattanooga, you know, they're, they're, they're crying, right? The season's over, the finality of it. And, um, you know, what really helps in this time is do these guys want to spend another day together? Right? Do they uh, do they love being with each other and they don't want this thing to end, so they're going to do everything they can? And it's not that the teams that lost didn't, but that's why those games, I mean, through all the conference tournaments have been so great, and that's what makes the Big 12 so great, um, that, uh, you know, every game is like a tournament game. And I think every team right now, it doesn't matter who you are, they're playing like, you know, it's your last game because it just means so much to you. Kind of seen that through a guy like Tyler or a guy like Will, or this is this very well, this this is their last college postseason, no matter what happens. Yeah, no, it's it's easy when you say them, but what Tyler and Will and those guys need is for Day Day to feel the same way, right? And in preparation and in practice, and Buddy to feel the way the same way, and RJ to feel the same way. That that's really where you need to see it, because if those guys see it that way then they bring a different edge to practice which then helps us get better because we have to keep getting better it's the team that will improve the most between now and when the season ends that, that'll go to furthest Arthur said after the Iowa State win that building uh, winning builds momentum and obviously they need to take that into practice and preparation leading into the game so just how has the practice and preparation been well yesterday was really good because we had an off day <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, just uh, today was good. Uh, you know, um, winning, like, for some teams, like, really um, might propel you. But for other teams, uh, sometimes it causes them to relax. Uh, these guys, they operate way better when their backs are against the wall. And so, you know, I don't want – I want them to feel the wall, <laughs> right? I want them to feel the wall there on their back and that it's on the line and because and, that's when they bring their best. You guys have been outspoken about needing to win multiple games in Kansas City. So how is, is it maybe a challenge to get your guys to lock in and focus on just this one against Texas? No, I've, I don't know that um, who's been outspoken about winning two, right? Uh, like, I think if we look at our resume right now compared to other teams on the bubble, we have as good of a resume. My statement all along has been nine wins in this conference and you were going to get in.
right, for sure. It didn't mean that eight doesn't get you in or seven doesn't get you in. Like last year, um, I think West Virginia was seven and 11, and they got in. So, you know, that that's not the thing. I just knew what I had to put in front of our guys so they understood that you do this, and then you're going to get in. And then if it's less than that, then now you're it's people's judgments. But I think when if you put our resume up against anybody else's blind, uh, the teams that are on the bubble, uh, our quad one wins, our no losses and quad threes and fours, you know, our strength of schedule because the league we play in, um, I, I like our schedule. Now, um, I think it's Bob Huggins that said one time, if first is available, why well, go for second, right? And so um, we're going up there to try and win a championship, a Big 12 championship, but you can't win it unless you win the first game. And so that's why we're only focused on the first game. I was curious if you could take a second and explain how you teach good shots from not good shots. Um, well, I, I coached a kid named Tweety Carter. And uh, man, Tweety could take some shots. And when they was going in, they was good shots. And if they wasn't going in, they might be bad shots. And uh, there were some shots that people would think of bad shots for Tweety. Or Lace Darius done that, you know, were well, good shots. Marquise Noel took some shots last year. Keontae Johnson took some shots last year that if they didn't go in, we'd be like, I don't know if that was a good shot, but thankfully they went in. So, you know, um, you know, we uh we try to take shots where we're on balance, right? And we go up and land take off on two, <coughs> land on two. The more times we can take shots where we take off on two and land on two, our percentages go way up. But really good players, uh are usually guarded pretty well, and they have to take some tough shots. It's just about at what time in the game or what time on the shot clock are they taking those tough ones. It seems to me that part of the resume thing is that you didn't win games early in the non-con big. Do you feel that that is the case? Well, I think there's a couple metrics within the net that um, – because they cap your win at 15. Right, and so anything other over 15, you don't get any points for. But apparently, um, your offensive efficiency and your defensive efficiency um, allow you to boost that metrics. Uh, I was just always told just win, right? Win games, and that's what we did. All three quad three and quad four games we won. Uh, our only losses are the quad ones and quad twos. Those are really good teams uh, that we've played, and uh, we don't have any bad losses. And we have 425 top 25 wins and three top 10 wins. And so, um, I mean, that stacks up with pretty much anybody in the country. It seemed like the game in Austin was like what most coaches these days would call a rock fight. Yeah. Would you agree with that? And if so, are you expecting a similar game now or is it pretty or too easy to maybe think that way and every game is itself? We like rock fights. And so, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're all about it. We, we want to make it a rock fight. That's where we operate best. And um, so, yeah, we can't allow them. They're, they're so athletic and uh, they have weapons and we can't let them get up and down and transition. And, you know, we have to make them play in the half court. And, um, you know, they got two prolific scores. And then uh, Tyrese Hunter has been playing like his game against Oklahoma. You know, I mean, he looked looked like a first team all conference guy in that game, and you know, so so I mean, they're, they're, it's going to be tough. We need we need to make it, you know, a real gritty, a grimy, low scoring type game. You think you're going to like playing the first game of the session, or does it matter? No, I do because you get the 60 minutes to warm up, rather than the 30 for the in between games. Um, TP and Art got honorable mention, all Big 12. Mm -hmm. Were you disappointed by any of the voting? Justified? Were there guys left out? What were nah, your thoughts? You know, to the winners go to spoils, man. If you, uh, Houston, I, I, didn't, I haven't even seen the teams. You know, I saw that they were, but I would assume that, that Houston got a couple guys on there, uh, maybe three in the first two teams, and I would think Iowa State should have gotten two or three guys in there. And You know, I mean, that's when you're at the top of the league, you know, Baylor was third, so I'm sure they got one or two guys in there. The, the teams that win get those things, and they deserve it. How much of an advantage can the fans give you guys? Huge, huge, man. Uh, 
yes, uh, I'm, 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 I'm hoping to get to experience. Like, we didn't take advantage of it last year, right? And uh, I'm hoping that we do what we're supposed to do, have a chance to allow our fans to be an advantage for us. How much, <clears throat> just like with the Iowa State game, you played them early in in, in the in the Big Twelve season. How how much growth have you seen from from this group since since you played in Austin to today? Yeah, no, I think uh, we're, we're playing a lot better. Um, we're, we're taking you know just better shots, and um, I, I think the desperation of the time is and their backs against the wall is gonna bring a different energy to but I thought we played with great energy down there you know we just didn't execute some things we missed some layups you know um you know so uh and then they made some big plays when they needed to so and whenever you play somebody on their home court it's tough to win and they took took care of business like they were supposed to but I mean we were right there you know one of those like a one or two possession game and you know so uh I've seen a lot of growth in our team is there anything you can say about David Gasson that you haven't already? I mean, he's just done such an amazing job, and under the circumstances, it's just admirable, I think. Yeah, no, um, David's fought through and continues to fight through this, this knee injury, and his sacrifice for the team is, um, you know, it's really special. It shows how much he cares uh, about our basketball program, about his teammates. You know about our university, and so and and to be able to perform the way he's been performing through the injury is you know just fills my heart. You know, and and just to think like if we can get him healthy, like how much more he can improve, how much more he's going to be able to do, and so uh, excited about the future. You may not want to go there on that one, but is there a possibility of him getting what better as this whatever's left for the season? Um, well, you know, we have to manage it and uh, just give him the opportunity to be his best version of himself on game day, you know, and so we're managing his reps at practice and, and he's doing everything he can, um, you know, just to take care of himself, working with Luke and Phil and so. Yeah, sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> you, uh, after, after the game on Saturday, you mentioned when you were talking to the fans um, about the adversity that you guys have fought through this year off on the court, off the court. I was just curious, as far as for, for you, how much support has kind of your, your, your leadership system, the people above you, given you guys to kind of help kind of fight, fight through that and kind of keep, keep upright through the, the, the harder portions of, of that? Um, you know, the administration here, um, everyone that's above me have been incredible uh, in supporting us, and uh, I, I appreciate it, whether it's from text messages or showing up to support, phone calls, you know, just, just the encouragement has been great, and, you know, everybody understands it. But uh, to me, what it means the most is the way our, our staff has responded, right? Like. Um, we could have hung our heads, we could have pouted, we could make excuses, and, um, but we haven't done that one time. And, um, and you know, just we've given this, these guys our very best, and I feel like they've given us their very best. And, uh, you know, the things that happen cause guys, whether it's injuries or whatever, cause guys to have to, their, their roles were going to change rather than what we saw. And then we had to figure out how to help them in those roles. And I feel like, um, staff's done an unbelievable job with that, and the guys have done a great job of embracing it. And that's why I know our, we got better basketball ahead of us because we keep continuing to improve. And we talk about being 1% better every day, and um, every day I see improvement.